From perk ideas, licensed characters I want to come to the game, blood point incentives, and more, here is my wish list for what I would like to ideally see in Dead by Daylight this year. Let's start with licensed chapters. I think we could have an absolutely insane chapter if we got a PT chapter. I know this is very unlikely because PT was not even a full game in itself and it was for a cancelled game, but this was genuinely the scariest game I have ever played in my entire life. And I think this killer could bring us back to those kind of scary roots of DBD. So of course the killer would be Lisa. I don't know necessarily what she would do with her power, but it would be something scary and something where she's like stalking you. For the survivor, it would be the protagonist that you play as. He does not have any name, but you could see what he looks like when you beat the game. And for the map, I don't know if they could do a map, honestly. I think it'd be really sick if they could somehow incorporate a house with that exact hallway and maybe have it be similar to Garden of Joy, where the outside is that city that you see in the cutscene at the end. I don't really know what they could do. If you guys have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. The second licensed chapter I would want to see is a quiet place. I think there's so much creative potential with this as a chapter. For the survivor, we could have, you know, either Emmett or Evelyn or Lee. And for the killer, obviously a death angel, which is apparently what they're called, which I did not know that. And then the map could be the farm from the first movie. Like it's perfect. We have so many maps where it's like the main building is a house or a farm. And then we have kind of the outdoor area. It'd probably be a little bit similar to Thompson house, but I feel like there's some interesting loops that you could add to it. And the killer just being a death angel where their power has something to do with sound would be so sick. We've yet to see any killer that has to do with sound besides spirit, but she's obviously completely completely different than this. So I just think there's so much creative potential with this and some iconic characters and an iconic map. The third licensed chapter I would want to see, which I don't know if people would agree with, but I am a huge COD Zombies fan, if you couldn't tell by a lot of things in my previous videos. So I think a COD Zombies chapter would work so well because there's so many characters that you could use as survivors or as killers or even places as maps too. Like for survivors, you could have Nero with, you know, Jeff Goldblum doing the voice lines. You could have any of the premise characters you could have Samantha Maxis. There's so many characters and you can have a ton of legendary outfits as well. And for the killer, I have so many different ideas that would work. My most unique one, I would say, is a keeper, just purely based on aesthetics. And I think that they could use like the Shadows of Evil teleporters and have that as a power somehow. And then my other ones would be like the Pentagon Thief, who can maybe teleport the survivor to a random location. Brutus, just because he's iconic and his player model kind of looks like a killer. The Destroyer from Black Ops 4. It could be kind of similar to Huntress, but have it be more of like a boomerang hatchet instead of a regular hatchet. We could have the, however you pronounce this word, from Ancient Evil, where he has the spear that he can throw and then after a while it detonates. And last but not least, what we should have had with Legion, we could have the Mimic, where he could turn into an object on the map and somehow deal damage with it or something. There's so many options for a killer and so many of them would work very, very well. And then for the map, I think the coolest thing would be Nocturne and Toten, but like a mix between the inside and the outside of Noct. So the OG Zombies map from World at War, but you have part of it be the actual Nocturne and Toten bunker. And then you have most of the map be kind of the external area on the field because you could just, you know, set up a bunch of loops. Otherwise, I'm sure there's some creative things that you could do. You could even do like a completely original map that's kind of inspired by Revelations where you just combine a bunch of different areas from different iconic zombies maps and, you know, make a map out of that. I think this is completely unrealistic because Behavior said that maps are the hardest thing. So I doubt they'd want to <laughs> put that much effort into a map, but I don't know. There's a lot of creative potential. I'm just saying. And then my last licensed chapter that I would want to see is Little Nightmares. A Little Nightmares chapter would be absolutely fire. For the survivor, obviously we'd have six or mono, pretty much the only two protagonists in the game. And then for the killer, I think the best one would be the Thin Man. You could maybe do the lady or maybe do the teacher, but I think the Thin Man has the most potential for kind of an ability in DBD because he'd be similar to Onryo where he can teleport through TVs and just like teleport around the map, but he would work very, very well. The lady could potentially have a power having to do with mirrors and maybe you have to like find mirrors around the map to be able to counter her or something. I don't personally like when you have to get items to counter killers like Xenomorph, but you know. And the teacher, <laughs> I mean, she would have to have some sort of ability where she can, you know, extend her really long neck and do something with that like she does in the games, but I don't really know how that would work in DVD. And then for the map, obviously, either the Pale City or the Ma, like, th those are the only two options. I mean, you could do the school, I guess, but I think the Pale City would fit the best for DVD, but the Ma could potentially be a very cool option as well, especially if you can, like, really feel that you're on a ship. And then I have a few ideas for killer powers that I just generally want to see. It's not necessarily like characters of a killer, but just the abilities themselves. So the first one I would want to see is some sort of stealth mobility killer. Something with a ton of speed and stealth, but obviously that'd be really good. So it'd have to be balanced accordingly. So they'd still have to like chase survivors and stuff. Like what I kind of imagine is something with blight speed that makes you go completely undetectable, but you can't hit with your power. So it'd almost be like Wraith where you don't have the speed from coming out of your power, but you have that extra speed while in your power. It might be a little redundant with 
with Wraith now that I think about it, but I don't know. I just think we need a really fast stealth killer. And then the next one I'd want to see is kind of like a hypnotist, not like a normal human hypnotist, but just something, some sort of power that messes with the survivor's minds. I think the doctor and Freddy are kind of like a stepping stone to this character that I have in my brain. I just think there's so much untapped potential with kind of tricking the survivor's minds. I don't know how you could possibly do that, but whether it be, you know, fake items that you can set up around the map, something that messes with the survivor's brains, because this game thrives on mind games. So if you're able to do literal physical mind games, I think that would be cool. And the last one, this one does not fit DBD at all, but I think it'd be really cool, is like some sort of celestial being that just toys with its prey. So it has these ethereal and godlike powers, but it's not like completely OP because it just likes to play with its food, you know? So there could be like an aerial beam that comes from the sky or, or some random thing like that, or where he could completely respin a tile to make it turn into a different tile. So some really interesting godlike powers that they could do. I think there's unlimited creative potential for what you could do with that. All right, now I have a couple of perk ideas, but I didn't want to do just normal perks. I wanted to add on to a couple of the new perk archetypes that we have. So I have three perk ideas for boons, three perk ideas for scourge hooks, and three for rekindle hex perks, because we only have one of those in the game in the form of pentamento. So for boons, we're just going to get the most overpowered one out of the way. It grants endurance to any non-exhausted survivor in its radius, but it breaks the totem when it's used. So obviously, this would be completely busted, but I'm not totally worried about balance in here. This, these are literally just ideas. It's not like I'm not trying to be balanced at all, but I think it'd be a really interesting dynamic to make survivors boon a totem in order to get an additional hit, because I think this could cause a ton of strategy to be used, and it would help a lot against camping and tunneling killers, because like, for example, if somebody's getting tunneled, the only thing you can really do is work on gens or try to take hits, but with this perk, you could set up an area for the person being tunneled, so if they can make it to that area, they get an extra hit. I definitely think this would be a meta perk if it were to come to the game, but I do think the fact that it breaks totems means that you can only really get one or two uses out of it probably during the match, unless you really, really focus on using it, but then you're not doing your main objective, but you can use it to come up with some insane strategies during the game, which I personally think is the best part about DVD. Like for example, coming up with strategies with your adrenaline mid game is super, super satisfying. And I think this perk would be able to do something similar. And then we have another boon perk, which is more of a fun one. It spawns a random item with random add-ons in its radius every 30 seconds. So you could just set this up and farm items until you get what you want, but it could actually be useful as well. Like it could genuinely turn the tide of the game. You could get a med kit with a stip dick that could allow you to escape. You could get a med kit with a syringe and get a really easy heal if you're playing on solo queue. You could even get a key if you're the last one alive and make the kind of end game hatch situation a lot more interesting. I think there's a ton of potential with this and obviously it would probably need to be capped because I'm sure there's a certain amount of items that you could have on the map until it kind of breaks the game. But I don't know. I think this is a fun idea and could potentially be very useful. And then my last boon idea is one that shows you the aura of the killer, but also shows your aura to the killer. I think this sounds really good on paper, but I actually don't think it would be that strong. It's essentially the old version of Object of Obsession. And the reason I don't think it'd be that strong is because if the killer sees your aura, it's going to be very obvious that they have this perk on so they know where to destroy that perk if they need to. So yes, it's good for information, but it can really easily be snuffed. When it will be good is if you're able to have it just out of reach of a loop, but have the radius still be in that loop. So you essentially have wall hacks on the killer, but the killer has wall hacks on you. So I do think this perk would be borderline busted on like Gideon Meat Plant, for example, because you could put the boon on the top story and it'll go to the bottom story and it would just make it really, really difficult for the killer. So obviously there would be, there would need to be some sort of balancing with this, but I think the idea of seeing the aura of the killer while you're in the radius is kind of an interesting idea and could allow for some cool information. All right, moving on to some Scourge Hook perks. One of them I have is kind of similar to the concept of Undying, but for Scourge Hooks, it essentially just turns every single hook on the map into a Scourge Hook, except for the basement. So I'd be really curious to see how meta this would be, because in my opinion, I think this would be an insanely good Scourge Hook. Being able to always get use out of other Scourge Hooks would be very, very strong. So I do think it might be a little bit overtuned, but I think something to kind of mitigate the randomness of your Scourge Hook spawns could be kind of interesting to look into. I definitely think that having this perk in general would make it much harder to balance the other Scourge Hook perks, like Gift of Pain and stuff, but I'm just throwing that idea out there. Like all of these ideas in this video are not completely developed. They're just like random ideas that came to mind. So there's going to be problems with them, but it's just for fun. The second one, I don't know if we already have a perk for it. I think we have something kind of similar, but essentially it would make you undetectable for 20 seconds after you hook somebody on a Scourge Hook. I think there's an alien perk that does something similar, but it makes the survivor oblivious and it only does one survivor or something. I can't remember right now, but if that's not the case, I think being undetectable after you get a hook could be a pretty strong ability, especially if you're using some sort of mobility killer like Blight or like Hillbilly, especially Hillbilly 
Hillbilly with that eerie add-on that makes his chainsaw silent when he's undetectable, that could be pretty brutal. So there's there's some pretty cool synergies that you could do with this perk, and I think it'd be really interesting. I really like stealth killers. I think stealth killers are some of the most interesting killers in the game because they still have to chase you, so you still get that typical DBD gameplay, but they can also outplay you and outposition you with their stealth to get you immediately injured so they don't have to chase you for that long. Plus, it's scary, and I love those scary moments in DBD. So I think this perk would lead to a lot more in those situations. And the next Scourge Hook idea is probably one of my more creative ones. For six seconds after hooking the survivor on the Scourge Hook, all generators that are regressing turn white, all generators that are progressing turn yellow, and all gens that are doing neither remain red. So if the gen's going down, it's white. If the gen's going up, it's yellow. And if the gen is not moving at all, the aura stays red. I think this is a good perk and is relatively balanced, actually. It would pair extremely well with a bunch of other perks. Like, for example, if you use Jolt and then you hook a survivor, you could see which of those gens are still regressing. And you could also see what gens survivors are working on currently. So it's a mix of like information on survivor whereabouts, as well as information on your gen slowdown perks. And overall, I just think this is a really good middle ground Scourge Hook perk. Okay, moving on to rekindle Hex perk ideas. I really like this idea that you can revive Hex perks and turn them into a completely new power, similar to what you can do with Hex Pedimento. So I wanted to come up with three ideas for that. These are relatively simple, but relatively strong as well, because they are Hex perks that have a prerequisite of you having to rekindle them. So the first one would literally just be to block all windows in a 24 meter radius. So remember, a survivor would have to break your previous hex totem or just, you know, break a regular dull totem. And then you'd have to go all the way to that broken totem to rekindle it. And then every window within a 24 meter radius is blocked. I don't know if this would be good or bad. I see a couple of potential problems with it. One of them being completely camping the basement. Like for example, if the basement is in shack and you're playing trapper and one of your hex totems spawned in shack, then the survivors have no way of escaping besides the two doors, which could absolutely be a problem. But maybe these rekindled hex perks could have like a certain timer or something, or they only work if you're able to set up two of them. Something like that could potentially keep them in check. My next idea is to have it where every time a survivor enters or exits its radius, they become exposed for 10 seconds. I actually think this one is pretty balanced. It could be a really interesting dynamic where the survivors either have to avoid going to that area entirely, or they have to risk being instant downed, or they have to send an injured person to go try to cleanse that totem. I don't think this is overpowered at all. I think it just creates an interesting dynamic where there's kind of a unsafe zone, so to speak, on the map. And if survivors want to utilize that, they're going to have to kind of play a little bit more risky to be able to, you know, unlock that part of the map again. I think maybe the survivors could see the radius of this perk. So similar to how they can see boon perks and how they glow blue, it would be the same thing, but it would glow red. Kind of an interesting idea. It wouldn't synergize with every single killer, but it could definitely help M1 killers like Wraith or Pig or any of those guys. Plus, maybe if it's a little too underpowered, the survivors would scream every time they become exposed from this as well, just so you also get a little bit of information. Although then the killer could just come back and protect the totem. So maybe the survivor would only scream if they leave the radius. I think that would be a little bit better for game design. Okay, my last rekindle hex perk idea is the closest gen will regress at 200% speed when not being interacted with. So essentially just a worse version of the old ruin and it only works on one gen. I don't know if it'd be good or not because we used to have ruin where it literally did the same exact effect but for every single generator on the map. And this one's only for one single generator. But at the same time, you're able to stack it with other perks. So it'd be an interesting dynamic and it'd be an interesting gen slowdown perk. I think if something similar to this perk were to come to the game, it should stack with Hex Ruin to make Hex Ruin actually a usable perk now. And I think it'd be interesting. I think the only issue that I can think of with this perk would be three gens. If you have a totem in a three gen, it's going to be almost impossible to do one of those generators, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because you could still pressure that gen. It's just going to be much harder to do that. So we're trying to get out of the three gen mana. So I don't know how healthy this would be for that, but it'd be interesting to see a gen regression rekindled Hex perk other than Pentimento. Also, I don't think that these would stack with each other. I think that would make it way too overpowered. So if you have multiple on, maybe it just like randomly selects them or something. All right, let's move on to some balancing changes I would like to see. These are not ideas for balancing changes. These are simply just things that I would want to see buffed or nerfed. So I limited myself to five of pretty much everything. So for five killers, I would like to see buffed. Number one is Trapper. I would really like just some quality of life features like him having all of the traps to start, maybe being able to set up traps a little bit faster. Something that makes him a little faster at the start so he can get the ball rolling a little bit earlier. The second killer I would like to see buffed is the pig. I think her head traps are perfectly fine the way they are. I would mostly want to see her stealth buffed more, and I would like to see her dash get, you know, maybe a couple base kit add-ons like, you know, the combat straps or something that makes it a little bit faster. Her stealth though definitely needs a buff. It is unbelievably bad. There's almost no point in using it in most situations, and I think just making it a little bit faster or even making her terror radius go to zero faster could make her stealth a little bit more interesting. The third killer I'd want to see buffed is Ghostface. Now, I don't think that Ghostface is one of the worst killers in the game. Like, he's pretty average. I just, again, really 
really enjoy stealth killers, and I think that they create very interesting dynamics in this game. So giving him a couple of buffs to bring him a little bit higher on the tier list without making him unfun to play against would be kind of nice. I would really love to see more Ghostface players because I think he's one of the most fun killers in the game. You get that scare aspect of him. There's interesting dynamics on different maps. You always have to be cautious of your surroundings on both the killer and the survivor, and you still get that chase, which most recent killers are lacking in DVD. The fourth killer I would like to see buffed is the Dredge. I find the Dredge to be absolutely awful to play and very, very frustrating and slow. I think the locks just make him feel very clunky, although I do think they're kind of a necessary counter to his ability, but it's very annoying to make this cool play when you teleport just to teleport to a locked locker and lose like 10 seconds of distance with the survivor. I think they can make a couple of his add-ons base kit, like the one that turns the auras of locked lockers into, I think it's yellow. So I'd like to move a couple of add-ons into his base kit, maybe rework a couple of add-ons, buff them a little bit, and just make his base kit a little bit faster. It doesn't have to be that drastic of a change, but I think maybe making his teleport a little bit faster or giving him a haste effect when he breaks a lock, something to make him feel a little bit more rewarding to play as. The last killer I would like to see buffed is Myers. Myers, of course, is one of the worst killers in the game if we're ignoring his absurdly overpowered add-ons, but base kit, I would like to see something a little bit better. I don't think he's necessarily like a terrible killer. Like I, I like the concept. I like the fact that you have to stalk survivors to gain this really strong ability, but I think he's just completely outdated. I would like to see some more interesting mechanics with him. I think this killer has a lot of potential and I feel like they could take the very interesting idea of having all the add-ons completely change the way he plays, which they do very, very well already, but I think they could go on that even further. So for example, change the vanity mirror to keep you undetectable while you're in tier two, but still limit your progress to tier two, but obviously you'd have to remove the aura reading. So now you have the option of doing scratch mirror Myers, where you have the downside of, you know, being kind of slow because you're in tier one and having a bad lunge, but you have the ability to find survivors pretty much wherever they are. Or you can use the vanity mirror where you lose the ability to get wall hacks, but you're faster, you have a regular lunge, except you're still undetectable the entire time. I think there's a lot of interesting changes that we could do to his normal add-ons to just make there be so many different play styles, kind of like what we have with the Wraith and his add-ons. There's so many different archetypes that you can do with his add-ons. And I think we have something similar with Myers, but I think we could take it one step further to make him a very fun killer. Okay, now for five killers, I would like to see nerfed. These are not necessarily just the top of the top. These are just killers that I personally think have a couple of things that are just borderline uncounterable in some situations. So the first one is obviously Spirit. Spirit is definitely one of the top three killers. So I would like to see her nerfed just because she's just grossly overpowered in chase. Like pretty much if the survivor's injured and I go into my power, it's almost a guaranteed hit. Like, yeah, it's technically a 50-50, but the 50-50 is usually in the Spirit's favor. So it's not really a 50-50 because the Spirit's faster. And I hate it because I think Spirit has one of the coolest powers in the game, one of the most interesting, unique mechanics, but I just think it's executed in a way that makes her a really boring killer to play as and play against because it's just so unrewarding. But that's just my personal opinion. The second killer I would like to see nerfed. This is going to be controversial, but it is Xenomorph. I still think that his tail attack is just very, very dumb. I personally do not like this style of anti-loop where if you're close to the survivor, there's pretty much nothing they can do. It's not rewarding. There's no chase. There's no mind games. The only counterplay to this killer is outside of chase. So that would be, you know, having good positioning, setting up your turrets, anything like that. But the reason I personally think that the game was better back in the day was because there was actual chases and there were mind games during these chases. Now it's just like, you can't really do anything in chase. So you just have to W key and you have to just rush gens, which is really annoying as killer and really annoying as survivor. So Xenomorph, I would love to see nerfed just on that tail attack. And then of course we have the nurse, obviously. I, I don't even think I need to really explain it. And the fourth killer I would like to see nerfed is Chucky. I don't want to see him nerfed too heavily though. I think this could be a very minimal nerf to just his scamper. I think his dash is perfectly fine the way it is. It's an extremely fun ability. It's a strong ability, but it has counterplay. I think the scamper, especially under pallets, is a little bit overpowered because in a lot of situations, the survivor just can't do anything at all. And maps are balanced with pallets in mind to allow survivors to have some sort of counterplay in dead zones. And if the killer can just ignore those pallets, then there's not much counterplay left. I've never liked the idea of killers being able to vault pallets. Like even with Wesker, I hate the fact that he can vault pallets. I think it's very, very dumb. I actually think it's in a pretty good spot on him now. And I think they just need to get to that spot on Chucky as well. I think his scamper over windows are usually fine, but something to nerf the scamper a little bit, I think will be a good change. And my last killer I would like to see nerf. He's not a good killer, but it's the trickster. I just hate the trickster with a burning passion. I, I'm pretty sure all of you know, so I don't really need to reiterate my thoughts. But I think if we could get to the point, just like Freddy, where Freddy is this completely boring killer. Most people think he's one of the most boring killers in the game, one of the most dull killers in the game, but he's so weak that nobody uses him anyway, so it's fine. I think if we could get trickster to that point, 
I would love to see that personally. Most people think that he's also one of the most boring killers and one of the most dull killers in the game, similar to Freddy. So I'd like to see him nerfed to the point where most people don't use him also, so we just don't have to run into them. But obviously that's very biased because I just absolutely despise this guy and I hope that he gets shoved into a trash can. Five killer perks I would like to see buffed. I went through the entire list of perks and I chose five perks that I think could have some interesting mechanics. These aren't necessarily all bad perks. They're just perks that I think are kind of unique or have the ability to be unique. The first one is Beast of Prey. Beast of Prey is arguably one of the worst perks in the game, but I do really like its effect. I do like the idea of becoming undetectable while in chase. I think it's a little bit redundant because you can just do red stain mind games, but if we were to buff this somehow, I think it could be kind of a nice perk for beginners to use because you unlock it early since you have Wraith for free and it would also help those baby killers in chase because this will be way before they understand how to moonwalk mind game. Obviously, we need a pretty massive buff to be good, but it would be probably a crutch perk if it was good enough and it would prevent those new killers from learning how to do moonwalk mind games because they're just used to this. It's kind of like killers who use Noed and Lightborn. Like they just don't learn how to actually play the game, so they just stick with that. <laughs> so I think this could turn into another one of those, but I still think it has an interesting effect that could be potentially useful. The next perk I would like to see buffed is Distressing. Distressing is just a very boring perk right now, and I think there's so much more that you could do with it. For those of you who don't know, it just makes your tear radius a little bit bigger. It's like 18% or 28% or something. It's like a, some random number. And then it gives you like a little bit more blood points in one specific category. It's really dumb. I think there's a lot more that you could do with it, whether that be making it more of a dynamic tear radius, kind of like monitoring abuse, or just adding some sort of extra effect with your tear radius. Like maybe every time a survivor starts to hear your tear radius, you get like a tiny haste effect, or you get some sort of small other status effect for a little bit. Something to make this perk a little bit more interesting and not just be like, oh, your tear radius is slightly bigger. I think there's so much you could do with this perk because it basically does nothing right now. The next perk is less unique, but it's brutal strength. I would like to see this perk just a little bit buffed. I think we've started to get a lot of maps that are just very, very pallet heavy, and there aren't a lot of perks to deal with pallets. I think obviously the best perk combo would be Spirit Fear Enduring. There is stuff like Dissolution and Blood Favor, but there aren't that many good pallet perks. And I think brutal strength has become a little bit outdated now. So I think a buff to it could be a little bit useful, whether that be just buffing the numbers by a little bit and bringing it up to like 35% speed, or even just giving you a small haste effect after you break a pallet. Because the point of this perk is to be able to catch up to the survivor faster after you break the pallet. So if we lean into that a little bit and give you a small haste effect, I think it could give this perk just the buff it needs to become a very, very solid perk. The next one I would like to see buffed is Hysteria. This is the nemesis perk where whenever you injure a survivor, all other injured survivors become oblivious for 30 seconds. And then it has a cooldown of 30 seconds. So you can kind of keep track of if they're still oblivious. Again, this just gives more stealth abilities to the killer. And I always think that that'll be fun. I think this is a really interesting concept for a perk and could be buffed to make it much more fun. They would definitely have to be careful with this perk because if this perk was too powerful, it would make a very, very boring hit and run playstyle. But I really like the idea of applying oblivious to other survivors. So you could, you know, throw them off guard throughout the duration of the match. And the last killer perk I would like to see buffed is, in my opinion, probably the coolest perk in the game. And that's Hex Face the Darkness. This perk is already pretty good, but it definitely does not compete with any of the meta perks. It's a little bit complicated, so I'll explain it for those of you who don't know. Essentially, when you injure a survivor, if there's any dull totem on the map, that dull totem turns into this hex totem. So you activate this perk when you hit a survivor. And now every other survivor will scream every 25 seconds if they're outside of your terror radius and reveal their auras for two seconds. So every 25 seconds, you get the location of any survivor that's outside of your terror radius. And then it deactivates when the survivor that you injured earlier to activate this perk goes down or gets healed, but you can reactivate it. The only time it gets disabled is if the survivors actually cleanse the hex totem. Like this is such a creative perk. This is one of the most creative perks in the entire game. And I really want to see it used more. It creates this awesome dynamic and really interesting gameplay during the game where the killer gets this cool buff. And if they're able to down the survivor before the hex totem gets cleansed, they get to use the hex totem again later in the match. It's such an interesting concept and creates kind of this new objective for both the killer and the survivors and takes away from like the stale gen rush gen slowdown meta that we have right now such a cool perk i wish it was buffed just a little bit more so that it was used all right and lastly for the section i have five survivor perks that i would like to see buffed again this is similar where i went through the whole list and i looked for perks that i think have interesting mechanics but just aren't good enough to be used the first one is repressed alliance i unfortunately think that this perk is a little bit dependent on the killer meta but i love the concept of this perk this is the perk that allows the survivor to block the generator so that the killer can't regress it but the problem problem is that other survivors can also not progress it. I think an interesting buff to this perk would be that it slowly progresses while it's blocked. It wouldn't have to be anything substantial. It could just be like 5%, 10% maybe. 
over the course of like the 30 seconds or whatever it's blocked for. So it would be undoubtedly worse than somebody working on it by themselves, but it would create a lot more interesting scenarios where you can get very, very close to, you know, getting a gen completed and completely block the killer from popping it or completely block the killer from pain resing it if you're able to activate your repressed alliance. Because remember, if you activate your repressed alliance, nothing can regress it. So it could be a really interesting perk to almost confirm the completion of the gen if you get far enough. The next perk I would want to see buffed is Spine Chill. I think they absolutely gutted this perk and I just really like the original concept of it where it activates something every time the killer is looking at you. I don't really understand why they nerfed this perk. Like, yeah, it was really good in the vault speed build, but the vault speed build wasn't even that OP. It just made your vaulting 15% faster, which isn't that big of a deal against most killers. Like, we've had much better chase perks than this that haven't been nerfed, so I don't understand why this one was. I honestly think the original Spine Chill would be a perfectly fine buff. I think if they just reverted the change, it would be perfectly fine, and I really don't think that anyone would complain about it. I think potentially the reason that Behavior changed it is because new survivors that didn't know about this combination probably thought that they should have gotten a hit because the animation did look a little bit weird when it was faster, so they were probably a little bit confused, and it kind of threw off their muscle memory. But again, I really like the idea of the killer looking at you and having that activate some sort of ability, whether that be the additional speed or whether that be, you know, something else. I just hate the fact that it now only activates if the killer's within 36 meters of you, and they have to be looking at you with a clear line of sight. That makes absolutely no sense. I think this is one of the worst perk changes in the entirety of this game. The point of Spine Chill was to get information of if the killer's coming to you after a hook or to get information of any stealth killers that are coming to you. It's literally called Spine Chill. It's supposed to give you a chill down your spine because you have this intuition that something's coming. If, the, if it activates when the killer has a line of sight of you, that means you have a line of sight of them. So you're not going to get a spine chill because you have eyes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just coping. And the next perk I'd like to see buffed is another perk that I think was absolutely gutted for no apparent reason. And that is Iron Will. I think they're fine that they nerfed the perk, but I don't think that nerfing it with two different nerfs was a good idea. I think either make it only 75% like it is now, but have it still work when you're exhausted or do the opposite where it doesn't work when you're exhausted, but make it 100% silent. I think removing one of these nerfs would make it an actually decent perk, but as it stands right now, it's just awful. The only reason this perk used to be good was because the tier three gave you 100% silence. That's why nobody ran tier one or tier two because it wasn't 100% silent. So there wasn't really a point in running this perk. So just removing one of those nerfs, I think would put it in a perfect position. I personally think that the original Iron Will was perfect already, and I don't think it should have been changed. Yes, it was strong, but it also created much more interesting mechanics in Chase where you can go for these risky, cool, fun, and unique plays, and they, they, they just strip that away. Like you can't do window techs. You can't go through the killer when you blind them at a pallet. You can't corner tech because you can't hide mid chase. Like not having this perk be 100% just stripped away so much of the fun potential in chase. I think this nerf annoys me the most, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. The next perk I would like to see buffed is this is not happening. This is the perk that just makes the great skill check success zones 30% bigger. You are better off running any other perk than this perk, probably. This does basically nothing. I think even if this perk activated while you were healthy too, it still would not do anything. The only time it's ever somewhat decent is if you're using like the hyper focus build, but even then you don't really need it. It gives you like maybe a fifth of a millisecond extra to hit the skill check. Like it's it's not going to change that much realistically. So I think they could potentially buff this perk to make it a little more interesting. Like maybe make it to where every other skill check switches from a really easy great skill check to a really hard great skill check. So for example, the first skill check that you get, both the good skill check success zone and the great skill check success zone is 50% smaller, for example. So it's a harder skill check to hit. But then if you hit it, the next skill check is a regular good success zone, but then the great skill check success zone is twice as big. So it's really easy to hit. And then the one after that is hard. And then the one after that is easy. You know what I mean? So this will prevent it from being used with hyperfocus because hyperfocus requires a streak of hitting greats. Yes, you could throw on stakeout, but it's also harder to hit the good skill check to begin with. And it would just make it a little more interesting, but then you could keep the prerequisite of being injured. I don't know. If you guys have any ideas, obviously let me know. And the last perk I would like to see buffed is desperate measures. I don't think this is a terrible perk by any means, but it's just a little bit too weak for my taste. I think it's a very unique concept, just having like a reverse thanatophobia. I honestly just think that the numbers could be buffed a little bit. Like I think the idea of the perk works perfectly fine and it has the unique mechanic of being able to unhook quickly, which doesn't exactly affect the perk anymore because there's no hook grabs anymore. But I really like the idea of your healing being super fast. I think what they could do is legit just steal the ability from thanatophobia, where if you have all four survivors injured, then you get a major increase in your healing speed. So you know how thanat, it's like kind of a mediocre slowdown, but then if all four survivors are injured, you get like 20% slowdown or something insane. I think this would work perfectly for desperate measures where if everybody's injured, you know, that's a pretty desperate situation, I would say. So make it so that you can easily heal somebody and then maybe nerf the numbers for anything less than four injured survivors if 
life that's a little OP. Okay, moving on to item ideas. The first one is from this concept by Cinemovs. I think that's how you pronounce it from this video right here. It's essentially this thing, kind of like the key where it does absolutely nothing without add-ons, but the add-ons completely change the way it works. So it's this thing called an alchemical vial where you drink it and it takes, you know, a couple seconds to drink. I might change a little bit of the information from the original concept, but it takes, let's say three seconds to drink and it gives you a different effect depending on your add-on. And it's a one-time use and it will always have two add-ons when you find it in a chest. So it's never useless like the green key. So here are a couple of the add-on ideas from the concept. Again, this is not my concept, but I might change a couple of things. One of them is to just remove your exhaustion. It's a one-time use and could be a very, very helpful thing. Obviously, that would be probably a purple or a ultra rare add-on. Then we have one like applies 5% haste for 20 seconds, applies endurance for four seconds, kind of like a styptic, increases all action speeds, including vault speeds by 5% for 30 seconds. So you could become really good in chase or you could use it to complete a gen. The auras of every player is revealed to you and your your aura is revealed to everyone else. You could use it for information. Can be drunk while moving. You can now drink this in chase to be able to get these effects in dire situations. Increases duration of the effects by 25%. Just a simple overall buff to some of the other add-ons that you can use. Increases the speed at which the vial can be drunk by 50% to make it a little bit faster. Reduces the stagger effect from falling from a great height for the next 10 seconds. So you essentially get one use where the stagger from a great height does absolutely nothing. And the last one gives you a random status effect for 30 seconds. So you could become exposed for 30 seconds or you could get haste for 30 seconds which would be extremely good but there's a lot of bad status effects you could get too like if you got broken it would just immediately injure you if you got incapacitated you wouldn't be able to work on gens for 30 seconds but you could get some crazy status effects like haste or like endurance where you get these very overpowered effects so it'd just be kind of a gamble i really like this idea i think cinemoms or cinemoves however you pronounce it did a fantastic job really thinking through this concept and keeping it balanced and within the realm of dead by daylight possibilities and then i have two other item ideas that are my ideas one is a concussion mine. This is all of the same mechanics as a flashbang, but instead of blinding the killer, it just gives them 20% hindered for three seconds. But again, this only happens if they look at the flashbang. I know it doesn't necessarily make sense because it would probably still concuss them even if they're not looking at it, but who cares? It's a video game. You could still get saves with it and stuff, but it would mess with their vision for a few seconds and make them a lot slower. So I think it'd be a little bit more useful than a flashbang because it allows you to get distance, but the killer can still obviously keep track of you. And if it's a killer like Huntress, for example, you could still potentially go down. And then my third item idea, which which I actually really like is a camera. So you hold right click to place it down on floors or walls and you only get one of them and you can pick the camera back up by being near it and holding right click again. So if you want to set it up somewhere else later in the match and when you have a camera set up somewhere on the map, whenever you hold right click again, you'll take control of this camera, kind of like what you do when you're playing as the singularity. And while you're in control of this camera, you have a small crosshair in the middle of your screen. And if you hold the crosshair on the killer, the killer's aura is revealed to every survivor, but the killer can hit the camera to destroy it permanently. So the camera would probably, you know, make a little bit of noise within a certain radius and have a blinking red light or something to make it kind of obvious where it is, even if you put it in like a bush or something. But I think this is a really interesting item to give information to your entire team. And I truthfully think that it's balanced because you only have one of them. So you have to set it up in like a very good position. You have to hide it or it's going to be easily destroyed. So it'd be kind of a waste of an item slot. And even if you find a really good camera spot and you're getting really good use out of it, it's still not that overpowered because now you have one less survivor to do the actual objective. So for example, if you're using it to help somebody in chase because you're tracking them while they see the killer's aura, that still means that now there's only two survivors working on gens, which won't give you a lot of progress. So it'd be a very difficult item to use, but I think it could have some solid potential. All right, moving on to game modes. Obviously, 2v8 would be absurdly fun. If you haven't seen my 2v8 video already, it was some of the most fun I've ever had in Dead Daily. If you want to go watch it after this video, I will put it on the end screen. And then, of course, Prop Hunt. I think Prop Hunt works perfectly well in this game. I don't see why we couldn't do it. We were able to make a Prop Hunt years ago, so it's obviously possible. Possible. And it just fits this game so well. There's so many different props on every single map and it'd be different for every single map. And then my last idea for game modes, there's so many game modes that you could come up with, but my last idea would just be to have more custom game settings so you could create your own game modes. Things where you're able to change the size of player model or change the speed of different things or allow you to change the values of perks or offerings or powers or allowing the banning of specific items or the, you know, being able to force people to use a specific loadout. If you just give the community these creative options, they will come up with their own game modes. And if there's some sort of server browser, then behavior won't even have to come up with the game modes themselves because the community will implement them. Even making something like a map editor would be so sick because like take a look at UEFN, which is the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. People can make pretty much whatever they want using the tools from the game and create these insanely awesome game modes or maps or experiences. And I could see so much potential with that in Dead by Daylight. Yeah, it'd be a lot of work to make, but it would retain the player base. It would bring players back. It would break up the monotony of the regular DVD gameplay because we haven't had a 
different game mode the entire time this game has been out for the like the seven or eight years that it's been out. And I know they're working on game mode soon, which is fantastic to hear. I hope that they execute it well. Okay, now we have quality of life settings that I would like to see. One, allow survivors to see other perk builds in the pause menu. I don't see why this would be that difficult to implement. Two, being able to turn off whether or not people can click on your show profile button without being in anonymous mode. There's a lot of people like killers, for example, who will look at the play times of every, you know, survivor and then will choose to tunnel the person with the least amount of hours or alternatively will just dodge a lobby if it's a bunch of high experience survivors. So I think being able to turn that option off without having to be in anonymous mode would be kind of cool. And then obviously gamma and saturation sliders so that all of the console players can also get the settings that the PC players get with reshade and NVIDIA filters and stuff. If you are on PC and you want to know how to make your game look like this, my most recent video talks about everything you need to know to do this. Number four, expanded graphical settings. Literally just take all of the game user settings from inside of the files and put them in the game so we don't have to go to the files to change them. So foliage quality, texture quality, let us change all of those individually in game. Five, the ability to choose between the old HUD and the new HUD. I don't think this is possible because I have a feeling that they just kind of got rid of the old HUD or just like doesn't work with the new code, but I still think the old HUD just looked so much better and fit the vibe of the game so much better. So being able to switch between those would be awesome. Next, the ability to move the HUD elements like in mobile. This isn't that big of a deal, but it would definitely be nice, especially for content creators who like to have a face cam in a specific area. Next, the ability to scrap unused offerings and turn them into iridescent shards or even just turn them into other offerings. There are so many brown add-ons and items that just aren't used because they're just terrible. Like, why would you use them? And with the blood point changes from a while ago, it's so easy to buy things that you're almost never going to use any of these brown items or add-ons anymore or offerings. So being able to actually get some use out of that would be kind of nice. And lastly, an Operation Health chapter. For those of you who don't know, Rainbow Six Siege did this thing called Operation Health where they did not release content for the entire season and purely used that development time to work on fixing the game and making it more optimized and making it better for the future. Dead by Daylight is one of the least optimized games I have ever played. It is a spaghetti code mess and I think if they took a season to just not release a new chapter and not release a new map, not release anything new content wise and just focused on making the game smoother, getting rid of the frame drop issues, implementing mechanics like they did with the kill switch and just focusing on improving the health of the game. This will un doubtably, as it's been proven by Siege, make the game better in the long run. And here are a couple miscellaneous things I would like to see. One is a reworked Eerie Shard system. They already did this a little bit, where they changed some of the characters to 4,500 shards, but I would like to see it, again, similar to Siege with their characters, where they get cheaper as time goes on. So after 12 months, after one year, they go from the typical 9,000 shards to 4,500 shards. I think those are the exact numbers that they're already doing right now. Then after 18 months, so a year and a half, they go from 4,500 to 2,500. And then after two years, they go from 2,500 to 1,500. This will make it much easier for new players to get into the game because they don't have to spend so much time trying to unlock every single killer in the game and every single survivor in the game. This will make the game way less pay to win as well because it'll be easier to unlock these characters, but it'll still require people to spend the full price on new killers and new survivors. So I think it's a good middle ground. Next, I would like to see prestige 100 rewards. I would really love to see exclusive cosmetics for that character if you get prestige 100 and make every single brown and yellow item and add-on unlimited limited on that character. So if you never leveled up that character again and used up literally every single item in their inventory, you would still have access to every brown and yellow item and add-on in the game. I think this is a fair trade, although to be honest, if you're at prestige 100, you probably have a million of those items anyway, but I still think it's an interesting reward nonetheless. So I don't know, just give people a reason to grind for prestige 100. There's absolutely no reason that you should not reward them with something. Next, and this is one of the most important sections in this video for the quality of the game, that is variety incentives. This is something that I would love to to see blood point incentives to either incentivize or decentivize you from playing in a specific way or to reward you for playing in a specific way. Or these are things that just create more variety in the game. So for example, a single map cannot be played more than once in a row for any of the players in the lobby, excluding map offerings. This wouldn't change queue times. This wouldn't be a problem at all because there's like 40 maps in the game or something. So even if every single survivor is a solo queue survivor, that means there are five total maps that they could not play on in the next game. And you have, you know, something like 35 other maps that they could pull from. So this wouldn't have any bad effect. Two is to reduce your blood point gain by 50% if you bring a map offering. I see a lot of people that complain about map offerings and just want to get rid of it entirely. I don't know if I would agree with that because I think being able to use map offerings creates more interesting scenarios like being able to do scratch mirror Myers or, you know, being able to bring a specific perk build for a specific style of map. I think it actually does help to create variety with that. But I do think that this 50% less blood points would dissuade people from bringing it all the time. I know a lot of people 
people don't care about blood points, especially people with, you know, thousands upon thousands of hours. But I think it would be a fair change and a good start to prevent this abundance of map offerings. And then also making the map offerings maybe ultra rare instead of green to make them more expensive to buy. I think that would help to keep the ability of map offerings to synergize it with your build while still making them less abundant overall. The next thing I would like to see is every other week, just drastically buff the values on two weak perks and drastically nerf the values on two strong perks. This would essentially switch the meta every other week. So it'd be like one survivor perk gets buffed, one survivor perk gets nerfed heavily, like a very substantial change. And then it'd be the same for killer. So it'd change up the meta every other week because people would try to make builds that revolve around the perk that's, you know, buffed for that week. And it would only be every other week. So you still have a week of like regular Dead by Daylight. Then you have a week of this buff nerf thing. Then the next week it goes back to regular Dead by Daylight. Then the week after that, it's the buff nerf thing. I think this would create a lot of variety and would prevent the kind of stale nature of Dead by Daylight perks where there's only 10 options that are good on both sides out of the 6,000 billion perks that exist in the game. So I think this would be very fun. Also, 15 random perks are selected each week on both sides. And each perk that you use from these selected perks gives you an additional 25% blood points. So if you use four of these perks in one loadout, it gives you double blood points while you use that build. I think this is an even better idea to incentivize new perk builds because you could double your blood points just by using new perks and trying to get value out of those perks. A lot of people really enjoyed the archive challenge that made you use random perks and you didn't know what you were going to use going into the match. And I think this is kind of similar to that where you don't really know what perks you're going to have to use, but you could try to make a build out of those perks to get extra blood points. And then the next thing I would like to see is very similar, but for killers. So two killers are randomly selected every single day and playing these killers will reward you with 25% additional blood points. We could bump that number up to 50 or even 100% if we really wanted to, but I just wouldn't want to create this huge discrepancy between killer and survivor because, you know, survivors wouldn't be able to get the extra blood points, but killers would. So I don't want it to be that drastic, but I do think that this would incentivize people actually running different killers and not just the strongest killers and not just their mains. It would kind of help to create a little bit more variety in this game because if people want to grind blood points, they can play new killers. And another thing that I think would help on top of this is playing a different killer. Each game will give you a plus 10% blood point bonus per killer. But if you play any of those killers again in that streak, it resets it. So for example, if you play Trapper and then Wraith and then Hillbilly and then Nurse, that Nurse game will give you 40% extra blood points. But then if you play Trapper the next game, it resets your streak because you had played Trapper in that previous streak. Does that make sense? Obviously this would have to cap at like double blood points, but it would create so much more variety in the game because you could play a different killer every single game. You could go through all 34 killers and you could just keep doing that to get double blood points. And it would force you to use different killers that you aren't normally comfortable with if you want to get that extra blood point bonus. I think this would be awesome. And then a couple of mini things like using no perks gives you double blood points. <laughs> I think we should absolutely reward people if they're not using perks. I think you should also get double blood points if you get a 4k with all 12 hooks or as survivor, if you get a four man escape without anybody getting hooked. And then I think killers should get minus 50% blood points if they get a 4k with four hooks or less. I think if you're choosing to slug every survivor and never hook them, or if you're only able to 4k only by hooking every single person once, that means that the killer is probably playing in a pretty cringe way in a really boring way. So I think a 50% decrease in blood points would kind of persuade them to not do that in the future. However, I kind of feel like the people who play like that do not care about blood points at all and just care about, you know, making the survivors suffer. So I don't really know if this would do anything, but maybe it'll help. And then a couple more things, just make more map unlockable Easter eggs. These are some of the coolest things in the game. So for example, on Temple of Purgation, if you finish the bottom gen, you get access to a new chest or on Midwitch with the secret chest or the best one with Nostromo, where you can activate the gas as an extra mechanic, or you can find a dead body around the map, grab its key card and unlock a completely new room with a chest in it. Stuff like that makes the game have so much more depth and makes it so much more fun. And it's an extra thing that people can do in the map. I would also like it to be available for killers as well. So killers have things that they can do as well versus it just being a chest for survivors. And then other things like hidden secrets that unlock exclusive things like charms or other cosmetics, like steps that you could take in game or even in custom games, puzzles that you can solve, something to give you access to new items and new cosmetics. It would break up the monotony of regular DVD gameplay and they could be really hard to obtain too, like make a randomized puzzle that forces you to solve it. Just some extra depth to unlock more things and have more progression would make this game a lot more fun. Comment below an emoji of your favorite vegetable, as well as some things that you would like to see in 2024. And YouTube thinks that you'll like this video on the left, so check it out and see if they're right. Or if you want to see that 2v8 video that I mentioned earlier, click on the video on the right.